Hello guys! Welcome to the 12th part of the SAS and Advanced CSS course. In this video, we are going to finish creating media queries for our page. The page will become fully responsive. So, without further ado, let's get started. Here, you can see the final result that we want to achieve. Everything scales good and looks absolutely perfect. We don't have much to do in the code. Using rem as our main font specificator gave us a lot. But there are some things that can be done better. Let's for example take these cards. They are not scaling good, the text is goes beyond divs. We need to write some media queries. So let's get started with it. As you may have thought, we need to wrap this element to next lines. Fortunately, we are using Flexbox and it has a very useful mechanism to do it for us. It is called Flex Wrap. Let's add it into Media Query for the tab land parameter. And as you can see, Whenever there is a lack of space, the card is jumping to the next line. So only one property there were needed to make it responsive. That's very cool. But we can do it a little better. We need to add some margin to each card because they are sticking to each other. So quickly just add margin set to 2rem in our responsive media query. And also, it will be great to have always two cards in a row, to don't let a single card jump into next line. We can achieve it by setting the flex basis to 45% for each card. We need to add one small fix. Of course, this margin property should be inside of our item. And now, as you can see, everything looks exactly as it should be. But on these smallest devices, something strange happens. Those cards are too small and they decrease in size even more. We need to make them bigger by overwriting the flex basis property. And it can be made here, just inside the responsive phone media query, set the flex basis to 75% and add the important parameter. We need to also remove the justify content because it can produce some problems. And now, you can see the finished version of responsive cards. With so adjusted media queries, no one will see any bugs with content alignment. I think that now we should focus on the header, because it also needs some improvements. First of all, we can increase the header height on smaller devices. It can be made inside tab port media query. The height should be set to 70 rem. We need also to center the label in the header on smaller devices. We need to force it to use all available width. Width set to 100% will do the work. Margin can be set to zero from top and bottom and auto from left and right. It will center the elements inside the container. The text align should be also set to center. And now, with this adjustment, we have nearly finished the header section. Maybe the welcome label can be a little bit smaller on phones. Let's add it. It can be made here in the welcome class. Just quick media query with font size decreased to 5 rem. 
it will be all in the header. We don't need to add nothing to the footer and also the navigation, because it actually is responsive. So we can now focus on the products. You can see the adjusted header. It fits perfectly. But in the product section, we can add some improvements. It will be great to have the grid stretched to whole available width. These images might look a little bit better. We can add this adjustment starting with the tab portrait media query. Here in the code, the only thing that we need to do is to set the width of the container to 100%. Here is the result. Maybe setting the padding to one rem from the left and from the right will be a good move. Let's try it. Just inside responsive tab port media query, add padding set to zero and one rem. Moreover, to fix all issues that can occur, we should remove the check element. It was this after sudo element. Mobile users cannot hover elements, so the functionality will be useless. To hide it, we should set the display property to known. Of course, inside the phone media query. And we've got our site fully responsive. You can test it on different devices, here in the Google Chrome developer tools. You can, for example, select Galaxy S5 and see how it will look on this phone, for example, on iPhone. And as you can see, it looks absolutely perfect on each device. Now we can add one small improvement at the end. In the base SCSS file, we can use the selection pseudo element. It changes the font color when user selects it, as simply as that. Inside just change the text color to color black and background color to color white. You might get an error because we haven't declared the variable yet. So just set the color black variable to black and it will work. It's just a small adjustment, but those small things improves nicely user experience. And now our site is completed. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you have learned a lot. Thanks for watching this video. Please click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my new tutorials.